Rob McNelly asks, how do you create a virtual optical disk? How do you map a disk in VIOS? How do you install AIX from Virtual Optical? In our last video, we had created a client LPAR called P7VIOS 3C. Now we will log into the VIO server and look at the virtual adapter that we will use. We had decided on using adapter 30. In this case, when we look at our LS map output, adapter 30 matches up to vhost 2. You can see this in the PuTTY window where the C30 in the middle column tells us that this is our virtual adapter 30 that we selected when we set up our VIO client LPAR. The vhost 2 in the left column in our PuTTY session is what we will be specifying in our VIO commands, and the client partition ID on the right column matches the HMC GUI partition ID column. Now I am running commands in the PuTTY window to make the virtual CD device called P7VIOS3CD and then to load the virtual optical device. In this case, it is an old AIX7 CD I had in the virtual media repository called AIX71.disk1.iso. After loading the virtual CD, I will run a command to create a new logical volume in my VIO server. In this case, I am just going to carve up a piece of root VG instead of mapping a whole disk or a LUN to this VIO client. If this were a real machine, I would end up using a real disk instead of this logical volume. This is just to demonstrate how I can run the make VDEV command to map my logical partition to my virtual SCSI adapter. Now I have a virtual CD with an ISO image loaded and I have given my client a 10 gig chunk of disk to use as its root VG. At this point, I am able to activate my LPAR and boot from my virtual CD and install AIX onto this disk. As always, during the install process, I will end up heavily editing it, although in this case we are only losing about 10 or 15 minutes as that is how long it took to load AIX onto this LPAR. I select Boot Devices, select Install Boot Device, list all devices, then I choose option 2, which is my virtual optical CD device. I choose normal boot mode and state that I am sure I want to leave SMS mode. I select 1 and hit enter to use this terminal as the console. Then I choose option 1 to use English as my language. I take option 2 to change show my installation settings and I verify that the disk I am using is the 10 gig disk that I created before. I go ahead and change my AIX edition from express to standard and I let the install proceed. This is where I go from installing the base operating system to rebooting in a second or two. Obviously this is where I edited out the installation wait time. I go ahead and select VT100 as my terminal type and I accept my license agreements and my software maintenance agreement terms and conditions. If this were a real install, I would set my date and time, but in this case, I will just set my root password and I will install OpenSSH before I go to the Tasks Completed Exit to Login screen in the Smitty. As this virtual optical device is just like having a real CD mounted, I can easily use it as my input device to install software. This should be just like installing any other software in AIX using Smitty. I will not bother doing a preview install. I will just go ahead and accept the license agreements and let it do the OpenSSH installation. Now I can select Tasks Completed and at this point I am able to log in as root. This video just shows a simple example, but these concepts should be easy to adapt to your actual environment. 